China's isolation from the global semiconductor ecosystem is almost complete. Japan and the Netherlands are anticipated to join the United States in building a silicon fence around the country in the coming weeks. Parallels with the Cold War and the Russia's isolation from the West points at the difficulties China would face in the coming decades. Governments in Tokyo and Amsterdam are set to adopt at least some of the measures already implemented by the U.S. to cut China off from the supply of semiconductor manufacturing equipment. Chipmakers in the world's second-largest economy will need to beg or steal technology if they want to close a large gap with the U.S., Taiwan, and South Korea. Semiconductors were invented in the United States more than 70 years ago, and the country built an entire industry around the tiny transistors in a slice of California. Despite the fact that Taiwan and South Korea dominate advanced manufacturing, America remains the industry leader in critical areas such as materials, equipment, and design. Despite spending at least $100 billion in 20 years to catch up, China still remains a minor player. During the Cold War, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev knew little about technology except that it was critical for his country to catch up with and overtake the Americans. And for a while, it seemed that was happening. By the late 1950s, the USSR had built chip-making factories and was only a few years behind the United States. Russian scientists and engineers were widely regarded as the best in the world, having launched the first satellite and, later, the first man into space. But it was due to shortage of access to an ecosystem of companies that relied on each other to share knowledge that ultimately led Russia to drop out of the electronics race. Along with the United States, the Netherlands and Japan are the leaders in the semiconductor equipment industry. Taiwan, South Korea, and a group of European countries are also involved but the first three control the majority of the market in terms of both sales and technology. Years of economic development and industrial development have resulted in China becoming a significant player in a few segments of the global chip industry. It is now the largest buyer of equipment and controls 21% of the wafer manufacturing market. However, it has a low single-digit share of key supply chain segments such as software, design, and machinery. China, like many other areas of its economy, has a foothold in chip manufacturing but is lacking in the fundamental technologies required to develop the products. As a result, it is unable to move up the value chain or produce more advanced semiconductors without outside assistance. Washington's containment policy is likely to be effective in preventing such assistance from arriving. Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation is the China's largest chipmaker and is primarily using 28 nanometer and older nodes despite claims that it has cracked 7 nanometer. So while Chinese companies buy a lot of equipment, they use it to make commonplace components. And the US is fine with China mass producing cheap chips as long as it doesn't get anywhere near the advanced stuff. To ensure that such a blockade remains in place, United States must ensure that other technology leaders join them. China will not only lose access to foreign equipment, but also any chance of developing the underlying technology required to catch up. If it holds and China does everything in its power to find gaps, the US-built fence has a good chance of neutralizing China's semiconductor plans.